Right, today I thought I'd show you the long-legged Charleston. It's one of the first steps that people learn when they're doing Lindy Hop. It is a Charleston step, but it's danced as part of the Lindy Hop. And it looks something like this. And that's what we're going to do. It's an eight count step, and it's easier than it looks. Okay, so the first thing you do is a rock step. That's your one, two. So, I go one, two. So I'm now, as if, as if I'm waiting for the starter to fire his pistol at the beginning of a race. I'm ready, okay? Everything about me says I'm going forwards. There's your one, two. Rock step. And my weight is over my front foot. I'm going to be pushing off this back foot. That's the way I'm going to go. So we're one eighth of the way already. So I go rock step. Next thing I do is a kick drop. I go kick drop. Now, I can't show you the three position normally. If this were an ordinary class, I wouldn't be able to show you the three position. But this is a video. So with the magic of freeze frame, I can show you the three position, which normally I can't. So the three position is hey. So you see, I'm actually off balance at this point. I, I cannot possibly hold this position normally, but the freeze frame is keeping me there. I have committed my weight forward. And it's extremely important that you really commit forwards on three. And if you do, then you can only do the correct thing, which is land it on four. Four. So I've now on four landed it. So the first four beats are rock, step, kick, drop. And we're halfway through already. Now the big kick comes on five. Rock, step, kick, drop, kick. Now I want you to imagine that you've gone into your neighbor's garden when they're not, when they're not there, and you've seen one of their garden gnomes and you can't stand it. Well, I mean, what self-respecting person can stand a garden gnome? So, there's a garden gnome there, and you're going to do a kung fu kick to that gnome's face. You're going to go rock, step, kick, drop, <laughs> stitch that garden gnome. So it's a kung fu kick, and it's not a footballing goal kick. So it's not a sweeping movement, it's a pumping movement. And one of the reasons you do this is because you've got down into your lindy position and you've gone rock, step, kick, drop. So to do a sweeping kick is actually quite difficult because I'm so down that the floor's in the way of a sweeping kick. So I have to pick this leg up a bit and then pump it. Pow! So smash the garden gnome on five. One, two, three, four, smash. Okay, so now we're five eighths of the way through. Now we need to bring that foot back with a little hop, hop, ready to go backwards. Now the seven is a bit like three. You're committing your weight backwards. So the seven is seven, eight. That is seven, eight. So on seven, I'm moving backwards. It's another position I can't hold. And I land it on eight. A lot of beginners will go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, and they put their foot down on seven. Don't do that. That's a beginner's error. So make sure that you land it on the four and the eight and you commit your weight on the three and the seven. Rock step, get ready. Commit weight, drop. Kick in, commit weight, drop. One, two, three, drop. Five, six, seven, drop. One, two, three, drop. Five, six, seven, drop. Now, another beginner's error is to come up vertically. I'll tell the class to, to go, ah, oh, come into this position here. They all look great. I say, okay, and now we're gonna do a three, four. And they'll go, three, four, and they all come up right. And they're dancing it like this, which is the sort of the Basil Fawlty version. That's the Basil. Don't do the Basil Fawlty version. Get down into your lindy position. Jump off your plinth, land, and stay there. You're a low, powerful athlete. Your back is straight, and boom, bam, boom. I keep that posture all the way through. How much you bounce is up to you. You could bounce a tiny amount so that your feet don't really come off the floor, or you could. Come off the floor every single time, so you, you, you can hear what I was doing then. It's not necessary to come off every single time, it's a bit exhausting to do that. Now, how do you do this with a partner? Well, fortunately, we can welcome to the screen the intimidatingly glamorous Laura Palpener, who is going to show us how to do it as a partnership. So, first thing is that she's going to put her left hand on my right shoulder. She's connecting with me. Now, if I make any movement with the shoulder, I go up, I go down she will definitely feel it. And it's very easy now for me to place my right hand around behind her back on the right side of her waist. And now she's resting this V part of her arm on the back of my arm. So if I move backwards, that's gonna take us back together. Similarly, she can feel my arm right the way across her back. So if I go forwards, that will take us forwards together. 
Okay, so now we've jumped off our plinth and we've landed. Okay, now, everything I've said um, uh, also applies to the follow, except it's mirror image. So on the one, she puts her right foot back, rock, step. So we're now symmetrical, so the mirror is between us, reflecting us. Everything is the same, it's just mirror image. So now, I launch upwards and forwards, and she feels, oh, we're going into a kick drop. And she goes, hey, oh, with me. And now we both do the kick, whack through the center. Now, I have stopped moving forwards. If I carried on moving forwards, we would perhaps land on that foot. We don't want to land on that foot. So after the kick drop, kick drop, I stop. And so she stops with me. She can feel where I am, and she can follow. Then we do the little hop through the, and the hook on the six, and then seven, eight as before, seven, eight. So the whole cycle looks like this. A rock step, kick, drop, kick, in, kick, drop, rock step, kick, drop, kick, in, kick, drop. Let's show that from the side. Pull, pack, pull. The, other, the outer arms are just swinging naturally. You don't have to force anything at all. Pull, pull. Oh, of course, you are free to decorate you do so wish. And if you want to put in some variations, pull, pack, pull, 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 hey, you may. Okay, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much, Laura. Uh, the long-legged Charleston, which was named after a dancer in Harlem who, who uh, was called Long Legs, and I've seen photographs of him. There's no irony. He had very long legs. <laughs>